Hello everyone, this is Divine Irony from Ghost in the EU, and this will be a video showing the third boss fight in the Ice Crown Citadel uh, 10 man raid instance. And this fight is called the Ice Crown Gunship Battle, where you as Alliance, the Skybreaker, sorry, Horde players, it's an Alliance guide really, but uh, the information can be chosen between each other because it's basically the same fight. Uh, the Skybreaker against the Urgrim's Hammer, I think. I'm not really sure. Now, the objective of this fight is to get the opposing enemy's gunship to zero while making sure your gunship does not go to zero. So, how are you supposed to damage the enemy gunship? Well, as you can see, there are two cannons on your gunship. Make sure to have two DPS in these gunship. Now we use two of our melee DPS, you can use ranged if you want, there are two separate strategies, but we're going to be talking about the strategy we used in order to complete the fight. Now, uh, the cannons have two abilities. One is called Cannon Blast, which launches a cannonball at the target. Uh, this inflicts 1000 siege damage and generates 6 to 10 heat. Uh, this can be done almost instantly, you can keep spamming this ability and I would suggest actually aiming at the axe throwers on the opposing um, on the opposing gunship because it also does damage to the axe throwers as well as the gunship. Now, what I would suggest doing is around 80 heat to use the second ability called Incinerating Blast. Now this consumes all of the cannon's heat to launch a massive ball of fire at the target. Now this inflicts 1000 siege damage, the same as a cannon blast, but you get an additional point of damage per point of heat. Now you're probably wondering why I'm saying 80, um, 80 heat, why not higher? Well I'm saying 80 heat because it's very very easy um, to um, it's very, very easy to go over and if you manage to get to 100 uh, you basically wasted all that heat and you're, and you're losing DPS time because uh, you have to wait 5 seconds because the cannon has overheated and you can no longer um, hit the opposing enemy's gunship which would mean the fight would t will take a lot longer. Now I've talked about the cannons now about what the cannons need to do now the rest of the group have other things to do. Okay now on the Skybreaker, a lovely little no lovely little gnome has given us jetpacks. Yes, the gnomes are very ingenious creatures, aren't they? They've now invented jetpacks. Uh, I'm patiently waiting for the super rocket. Um, I'm, I'm, no, I'm personally waiting for the nuclear missile um, uh, thing to be put in WoW, so we can just one-shot bosses. But uh, as the moment, um, gnomes are quite happy to give us jetpacks, and I. I'm not going to complain about jetpacks. Okay, you need to equip these jetpacks before you start the fight because you cannot you cannot equip them during the fight. And if you do not have the jetpacks on during the fight, you basically have to wipe the fight because you cannot complete the uh, you cannot complete the um the the in, you can't complete the boss really. You can't complete the um encounter without the jetpacks because you need to use them. Okay, you need to split your group into two different groups. Have one tank, one healer, and one DPS on your gunships, dealing with the horde um, boarding parties, but jump to your gunship uh, and try to kill you. Uh, you don't need any more than this. It's perfectly capable of he being healed by one healer, and you only really need one DPS to keep them in check. Now, the, other, uh, now the rest of the raid needs to be split into the boarding party which means you need one tank, two healers, yes there's a reason you need two healers, and two DPS. Uh, if you are having troubles while jumping over to the horde side, make make your um, defending defending DPS jump across as well because the um, because the, the mobs are the board your ship do not hurt that hard whatsoever. Okay, now you're probably wondering why you need to jump over there at all. Well, you need to jump over there because after a few, uh, after about 30, 45 seconds, um, a mage will spawn on the opposing gunship. Now, what this mage will do is cast an ability which will freeze uh, your cannons, which means you will be unable to do any damage uh, to the opposing gunship. So, what you need to do, make sure your tank jumps in first, 
your healers jump in afterwards and then your DPS jump. Now why do you need to tank at all? Well you need to tank because the second the tank jumps onto the opposing gunship a uh, high overlord Sarfang will engage um, your tank. So you don't you want your tank to be the first one over because if it's one of your DPS or healers they will probably be one shot uh, by the uh, South Sarfang because he does hit for a lot of damage. Uh, what you need to do is you need to have your tank engage Sawfang, have all your DPS go immediately onto the mage, he has no aggro, doesn't do anything but cast the freezing ability, so you just um, lay into him until he dies. And after he's dead, if you have time, kill the Rocketeers, because they are the ones that do the most damage uh, to your gunship. Now, you do not want to stay on the Hordes, um, Hordes gunship for a long time, because Sawfang will actually get an increased damage buff the longer you stay on the gunship. And if it gets over 20 stacks, uh, it's tank killing ability. So it's tank killing damage. So when it gets to when he gets to 20 stacks, you want to all jump back over. Again, make sure your DPS go first, then your healers, and then your tank. Now you keep need you keep having to jump over to their side. Uh, every single time the mage spawns up in order for you to keep using your cannons. Now the only other thing of note to say about the encounter is that the mobs on the horde gunship uh, gain, get experience as the fight goes on. So they will do very little damage at the beginning of the fight but the damage will slowly increase as the fight goes on. So they get experience and eventually their damage done will be increased by 100%, 120% really, and their attack and casting speeds will be increased by 80%. This is why you cannot be too slow while doing this fight. It really is a race to kill the opposing um, team's uh, gunship because they will do more damage to your gunship and it's really much, much harder to keep your DPS uh, and your... Um, and your healers and your tanks alive as the fight goes on because even the boarding party that jumps to your gunship gets this increase in damage. But really uh, we didn't really have that much problem with the fight. Uh, we found it uh, relatively um, easy to do. Um, so I don't think it will take you that long to uh, master this fight. It's slightly easier uh, than the two fights before it. Um, and you get a lot. Of, you get a nice loot, and I personally got an upgrade to my cloak, uh, which I found just really nice. Uh, and that's about it. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you liked this video, and I hope to see you in another video. Uh, I hope this video was helpful to you, and peace out, guys. I uh, see you again.